It was dark that night, or so I'd heard. But nights around here are always dark, even when there's a full moon out, and I hadn't foot set foot out of doors since mid-afternoon. Smoke curled around the ceiling, puffing in and out of the mouths on the frescoes. This one old man painted up there, he had his hands stretched out, bumming a lucky off a fellow in the foreground. I was of half a mind to go and give him one myself. He'd been reaching since I could remember, and was no closer to having a smoke. Come in, Spinner. A blue Shelia tripped up, tipping her cap to the ringy, and took the kip. With her other hand, she dug in her bag, pulled out a couple of coins, tossed them on the table. Equal? The bouncer asked. He was a tall bloke, dark, dressed in black from top to tip. His face was in shadow. The light cap taking a swing at his face and missing. It rolled back and forth, as drunk as the men on the ceiling. I tossed my own coins on the table. The girl flicked me a look. I gave her one back, about the same temperature. Not quite hot enough to boil water. Warm enough, I was thinking it might. Well, there was no harm in it. Not anymore. She flipped the coins in the air. Odds, the bouncer called. Toss again. Men were placing bets around us. Swag men, jackaroos, and wharfies, the lot. The Shelia was the only woman in the joint as far as I can see. She tossed her hair back, made a show of it, those red curls, poppies and ash, the brightest thing. She raised the kip, tossed again. The coins seemed to hover in the air, first heads, then tails, heads again, tails, heads, like nothing I had ever seen before. What kind of penny was this? When they slapped on the table, the face I had seen was gone. The coiled hair and staring eyes, the bloated face and protruded tongue, had vanished. All in my head. Nothing new. Odds, the bouncer called. Again. Hooting in jeers, someone began to sing. To Australia's shore, there came a roar. And one by one, the jostling ring picked it up, the words slurring and skewing with the drink. I tossed back my bundy, looked the woman in the eye, jerked my head for her to pick them up and flip again. Let them fall as they wanted, with whatever face fit they f their fancy, heads or tails. The smoke hooked and spun, thin curls spiking off coils of cold, indistinct gray, shivering a little on the damp air. The rum was metal in my mouth. I heard the soft snick of the coins hitting the table. Odds, the bouncer shouted over the noise. No one paid him much mind. A couple of fellows scooped their winnings up and walked out, to pats on the back and piss-taking. Others took their places, tossing their money on the floor. The girl grinned, slow and cold, and flipped the kip. I shifted, foot to foot, taking the weight off. The gum of the floor was as thick as old mud, and a, as a rank, sticky, sweet, rotting no. Heads and tails. Quiet spread, a slow, liquid loop. Again, the bouncer said. Under his cap, his eyes threw back a faint reflection. But if he had more than eyes to his face, it was more than I could say. Last throw. She held my eyes, jerked the kip up, and the coins flashed towards the ceiling faster, faster, heads, tails, heads, tails, that head again with its swollen smile and the sides of the coin uneven as if they'd been eaten away by the earth, an anchor. The smoke was thick enough to hold them up. Nothing was visible. Shouting crashes filled my ears. A flash. Spinner odds out, the boxer cried, and the girl stepped out of the ring, handing the kit back to the boxer. I stood, reached for my bet. A flash of light hit the boxer's face, just for a moment. Just long enough. I let the coins lay. One for the passage, one for the return. No one cheats the ferryman.